Hi, and welcome to the Ask Anson channel. I'm your host, Anson Garcia, and what we're going to go over today is forced authentication codes and client matter codes. So just quickly, let me um, kind of define these two things. So let's go over forced authentication codes first. I'm in the call routing menu, and there I have a menu right here, forced authentication, uh, excuse me, forced author, uh, authorization codes. So forced authorization codes are codes, if you think back, the easiest way to explain it, if you think back long ago, when people really locked down their PBXs for dialing long distance. So they put a forced authentication code. If you ever dialed nine uh, to access an outline, outside number and dialed one and then some 10 digit number, some long distance number. So um, it used to be that uh, many folks did that in their PBXs, you dial uh, that particular route pattern and then what would uh, be presented to you is a tone and that tone would be asking you for your authorization uh, code or your PIN number or something like that to authorize you to dial that number or dial long distance and uh, sometimes they had uh, a code for even local uh, so you could, you know, PBX was completely locked down. If you dialed even local, you'd uh, be presented with a tone and you needed to uh, input that authorization code. Similarly for long distance and then also for uh, international. Now a lot of times it was the same code. People would be assigned a code or something like that. Um, uh, call manager or CUCM has uh, this authorization level. So you can have you can kind of tier it, like uh, a local call could be uh, this authentication code, and that would match a route pattern, and then a long distance call would be this authentication code, and then a international um, uh, call would need this authentication code, and that's what these authorization levels over here, so you can have different route patterns that route out to the PSDN or your SIP trunk, and you can give it authorization levels based on what they're dialing. Okay, so that's a uh, definition of that feature. So what are client matter codes? Client matter codes are usually used in uh, entities or companies that need to bill um, time uh, for time on the phone. Okay, so if you think about a law firm, for example, law firms used to always just use time slips, right? They had some kind of time slip application and they would uh, if they're talking to a customer, they'd log into their PC. You know, I'm talking to client A. I'm going to, you know, uh, click on start the clock for client A, and then we start timing uh, or start the timer while they talk to client A or talk to the judge or another lawyer or, or de uh, an investigator or something like that about client A. Similarly, they had the time slip application to do a number of things. Maybe they were doing investigation on on the internet or something like that, but. Anyway, so it became a little bit easier if inside the PBX you could just punch a number and uh, that number would be associated, maybe it's the client um, uh, ID or the client billing code or something like that. And that would be wrapped up into the CDR. And then at the end of the month, uh, you had some system that parsed the CDR, um, looked at the CDR, uh, looked at these authentication codes or uh, client matter codes and match them up with the time duration and that would go towards the customer uh, bill. All right, so that's what that is. So let's look at how they work and um, we'll take a look at forced authentication codes first. So here we are, got several levels as I showed you earlier and then let's just take a look at one of them and you just name it whatever you want. You give it the authentication code, and then here's the authentication, or excuse me, authorization level. Sorry, I'm using those interchangeably. I apologize for that. So um, we have this one, one, two, three, four. Now let's go look at our call routing. So in here in route hunt, if we go look at a route pattern. I get a very easy breezy uh, route um, dial plan here. So I'm going to be using this route plan right here, this route pattern. So I see if I match, if I dial 8, that's my access number here in my system, and then 1, and then some 10-digit number, right, there's a bunch of wildcards over here, 
I'm going to match this pattern. I won't match the, any of these. So if I dial 8 and then 1, I certainly don't match 8, 2 through 9, or this 8, 2 through 9 here. So I match this one. So let's go into this guy. And if we look down here, we have this require forced authentication, and we have this authorization level. So that's where I speak to those levels. So you could have several levels based on what your route pattern is. You could have a route pattern for local calls, long distance calls, and international. Okay, so I'm going to click this guy, and we'll leave that at zero for now. We'll save that. Say OK there. Okay, let's go give this a try. I'm going to bring up a... This is my uh, Cupsy client, and I'm going to place a call on my dial pad here. I already have a number, 81, and then there's my 10-digit number, so I know I'm going to match that route pattern. So go ahead and make a call, and what you'll hear is a tone. So there's that tone asking me for uh, that authorization code. So let's do it. You hear that tone it was presented to me and now I need to know my authorization code. Remember it's one, two, three, four, and pound. Alright, so that's how that works. Very simple. So let's take a look, uh, a look at client matter codes. So here are my client matter codes. I'm going to go into one of these. And you define these, and it may be some administrator needs to come and uh, identify these as they get new clients, right? Another client matter code is going to be um, input in the system if I want to keep it per client. So here I just chose 1234 for a client matter code, and I got a description of this is call uh, to client A, or let's call, let's say that call 4. Uh, client A, just signifying that um, I know this is for my client A when I have this uh, client matter code. And this may be an ID, uh, a client ID that I have in my financial systems or whatever. So you can use whatever you want here. And usually they'll match that up. <coughs> match that up with uh, something in their financial system. Alright, so let's go back to our call routing. And we're going to call, or excuse me, go to the route patterns here, and we're going to go to the same route pattern. All right, 8 1. And you know, this time I'm going to go ahead and leave require force authentication code, and I'm going to add require client matter code. All right, so let's save that. Alright, we got that saved. We're going to dial the same number over here on our dial pad. 8, 1, so we're going to match that pattern. And let's see what happens this time. There is my first tone that's telling me I need an authentication on an authorization code. So remember, 1, 2, 3, 4, pound. And I get another one. It's a little bit different sound. Uh, but now it's telling me I need my client matter code. So I know I have a client matter code one, two, three, four, and again pound. And off goes my client. And I get connected. And then what happens there, the only thing different than the uh, forced authentication code and the client matter code is now in my CDR this client matter code that I inputted for this route pattern that I matched is going to come out in that CDR record and it also is going to show the duration of that call. So then I can bill against it in my financial system. I can grab the duration. I know, uh, you know, 1234 is associated with client A and then I can do some kind of automatic billing uh, with my CDR record. So hopefully that helps you understand client matter codes and forced author, uh, authorization codes. And uh, thanks for listening.